one of the most fun parts about creating levels for a game is making your own terrain. Luckily, Unity has tools designed specifically to sculpt, paint, and detail terrain within the Unity editor. And these tools have recently been updated with a lot more features. Now, we're making this video fairly early on in the development process of these features, since we think it's a nice way for you guys to try out the tools and help improve on them. In fact, after we did our video on the new input system, we talked to some folks at Unity, and they've really taken a lot of the feedback from the comments section and are already implementing a lot of it into the next version, which is just super cool. So without further ado, let's start making some terrain. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. Now let's get to it. So first of all, you need to make sure that you're using Unity 2019.1.5 or later. Now with that, we can go to window and open up the package manager. Here we need to make sure that we have all packages selected and go under advanced and select show preview packages. At the time of recording this video, the terrain system is still in preview and we should be able to search for it here and find terrain tools. As you can see, I'm using version 1.1.4. Now let's go ahead and install this. Unity is going to import the package and that's pretty much all the setup we need to do. However, Unity has also created a package on the asset store with some sample terrain assets. In fact, that's what they're linking to right here. Now I'm not gonna click this, instead I'm just going to go directly to the asset store tab. Remember, you can always find this under window, asset store. And I'm simply going to search for the terrain sample assets. The pack is right here, as you can see, it's free. I'm simply going to download that. And the cool thing about this pack is that it features more brushes that you can use while sculpting and painting, as well as some cool sample textures that we can try out. Now let's hit import and import again and we are now completely set up. As you can see in our assets here, we now have a folder called samples with all of the terrain tools, including brush textures, terrain brushes, layers, and so on. Super cool. So now it's time to create a new terrain. And we can do this really quickly by simply right clicking in a hierarchy, going 3D object and selecting terrain. And right away, this is going to spawn in a huge piece of terrain into our scene. Now I'm just going to go ahead and disable the example assets in our sample scene here since we're not going to be needing them. So that is one way to very quickly create terrain. However, there's another way if we delete this piece of terrain and instead go to window terrain, we can use the terrain toolbox. And the terrain toolbox is a new window that allows us to easily set up terrains with specific settings, change settings on multiple existing terrains at once, and just overall smooth out the process of working with terrain. So I'm simply going to take this and dock it next to the inspector over here. And as you can see, we have some parameters here for the width, length, and height of our terrain. You can set these to whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave these as is, and remember everything can be changed later. So let's go ahead and hit create. And as you can see right away, it creates the terrain within our scene. I'm gonna go back to the inspector here and let's have a look at what has happened here. So if we go to our project, first of all, we now have a terrain folder and within this, we have a terrain data object. This stores all the information about our terrain, such as where there are hills and slopes and what textures we apply. You can also see that it's gone ahead and created an object in the hierarchy. In fact, it's both created a terrain group and within this, a terrain object. This object has two components, the terrain component, which is used to configure our terrain and used to change our sculpting and painting settings, as well as a terrain collider, which creates a collider so that physics objects will interact with our terrain. So at this point, we are ready to start sculpting our terrain. I really recommend that when you're working with your terrain, you go to the top of the scene here and make sure to disable fog so you can see everything clearly. And that you also go to lighting and make sure that auto generate light maps is turned off. So with that, let's get painting. So the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and select the paint terrain tool here. And with that selected, we get a bunch of options. First of all, we want to make sure that we have race or lower terrain selected. Here we can choose between all of the different brushes that we can use. I'm just going to choose an ordinary soft brush. And if I just hover over my terrain now and try and press, we can see that I can start sculpting. To the right here, you can change brush settings such as strength and size, or you can do so using shortcuts. The shortcut for strength is A, so if I hold down A here, I can adjust how much strength I want to apply with my brush. In other words, how much do I want to sculpt the terrain by holding down my mouse. I can also adjust the size of my brush by holding down S and simply dragging here. Now I have a much larger brush and can make much larger changes to the terrain. Let's try out a bit more of an interesting brush here. And if we hold down D, we can also rotate it in any way that we'd like. 
And you can see just how easy it is to add in detail with brushes like these. And of course, all these shortcuts can be changed using the shortcut editor. Another cool thing is that if we hold down control, we can invert, which allows us to lower the terrain. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the size of my brush here. And if we go ahead and change the spacing, we can change how much distance we want between each individual brush stroke. We can also use scattering to add random scatter to our brush, which can lead to some pretty interesting effects. Now all of this is just by raising and lowering the terrain. We also have other paint modes here, such as set height, which allows us to set the terrain to a certain height. Down here we can see the height that we are setting to. Let's try and change this to something like 90. Let's do a soft brush. Let's increase the size of this brush. And as you can see, we're now setting everything that we paint to this height. Really cool. We also have another mode called smooth height. This can also be accessed from other tools by simply holding shift because it's something that you use fairly frequently. And it simply allows us to, well, smooth out parts of our terrain. Now this here is pretty extreme. We can of course adjust the brush strength as with anything else to reduce the impact, but it will definitely smooth out the terrain. Really cool. Another cool mode is under Sculpt and it's called Noise. And as the name suggests, this simply allows us to paint noise onto our terrain. We can go ahead and adjust settings for the noise down here. Most importantly, we can adjust the scale of our noise. Let's translate it to something like 20 by 20 by 20. And as you can see, I can now start to paint in this noise on top of our terrain. This really easily allows us to add cool detail to our terrain especially if we go ahead and increase the strength a bit, you can see just how easy it is to create interesting results. In fact, under these modes, you have a lot of really cool options to achieve certain effects or just add life to your terrain. For example, under Sculpt here, we also have the Bridge mode, which allows us to control click on a start point. Let's choose this one. And then click on another place of our terrain to create a bridge across it. This is super easy for creating, well, bridges or roads and can lead to some really interesting effects. Another cool thing is terrace, which as the name suggests, will divide our terrain into terraces or layers. We can adjust the terrace count in order to change the appearance of this effect, but it's definitely really handy if this is the look you're going for. There are also some really cool brushes called erosion brushes. You can see there's hydraulic, thermal and wind. I'm going to select hydraulic here, which erodes the terrain according to fluid simulation. You can of course change some settings about that simulation down here, but if I just go ahead and paint, you can see how this is kind of smoothing and flattening out the terrain, just like it would be if it was exposed to water over a longer period of time. Really cool. And these are just some of the modes. Honestly, there are so many more that I definitely recommend you play around with. Now, if you're working on the terrain and realize some of your settings are off, well, then you can always go to the last cog tab here, which is the terrain settings. You can adjust a bunch of different things, including our mesh resolution. Again, the width, length and height of our terrain. And in fact, one thing that I recommend is scaling your terrain to be larger while working on it. In fact, I found bumping up your resolution on the width, length and height to over 2000 while working on the terrain is really, really nice. And then you can always go ahead and decrease it later and it will still keep a lot of the detail. Remember, if you need to adjust settings on multiple terrains, you can always use the terrain toolbox to do that. You don't have to go to each one individually. Now, another cool thing about the terrain system is that it allows us to string together multiple terrain tiles. This is cool because you don't always want your terrain to be completely square. So if we go to the first button here, we can create neighbor terrains. And we do this simply by clicking. And as you can see, the really cool thing about this is that height data is going to transfer seamlessly onto the terrain. In fact, we can go ahead and create neighbor terrains on all sides here. And if we go in here, we can now start to paint across all of these different terrains. So if I just go in and raise and lower the terrain, you can see that I can do so on multiple terrains at once. Awesome. Now for this to work, you need to make sure that all of your terrains are sharing the same group ID. As you can see, all of these terrains have a grouping ID of zero. And they also all need to have the same resolution. Just a heads up. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these new terrains here and just try and focus on this single one. So the next part of the process is painting. And we also do that, of course, using the paintbrush, but we need to change the mode to paint texture. 
And when painting onto terrain, we are working with what is called terrain layers. And as you can see, currently there are no layers here. So let's go ahead and hit edit terrain layers. And here we can either create a layer or add an existing layer. Let's try and create one. This is going to open up a panel where we can select a texture. I'm just going to go ahead and select a simple dirt texture. This is from the terrain samples pack. I'm going to double click on it. And right away you can see that it's added this texture as a terrain layer. You also see that we now have an object in our project called new layer. Let's go ahead and call this one dirt layer. And in here we have settings such as the diffuse map. We can also input a normal map. So I'm going to go ahead and input the dirt normal here, as well as a mask map where I'm going to put the dirt mask. We can adjust stuff like metallicness and smoothness in here. And you can see it applies to our entire terrain. And of course also texture tiling. And if we zoom in, we can see that the texture is actually here. It's just being tiled a whole bunch. So we can go ahead and of course adjust the tile size here to kind of change that around. But of course, right now we only have a single layer. Let's go ahead and add some more. So I'm gonna hit add layer here and I'm gonna select some of the ones that are already in the sample assets. I'm gonna select rock. I'm also going to add a sand layer, a scree layer. Let's add some snow and some moss. And at this point, we're ready to just start painting. So I'm gonna increase the size of my brush here. You can play around with the opacity and I'm gonna start adding rock to my mountains. I'm also going to add some moss in here, just kind of scatter it around. Again, guys, this is not gonna be pretty, just showing off the tools. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of scree in here. Let's add some sand along the sides. Don't ask me why there's sand on the top. And finally, we're gonna paint in some snow just a tiny bit at the top of the slopes here. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and use a different brush so that we can kind of scatter this around. Again, not going for any awards here. And there you go. It's that easy to start sculpting and painting a terrain with these tools. I should also mention that the Unity environment team is working on a brush pack for texturing that is scheduled for 2019.2, so we'll have more cool brushes. And I know I haven't touched on these two icons here. They are for painting trees and foliage onto your terrain. Now, this is for another video. Just know that the option is here and that it works very similar to painting textures. And finally, I just want to show you one of my favorite features, which is the ability to create a terrain from a height map. Now, if you don't know what a height map is, I have an example of it right here. As you can see, it's a black and white image that stores height information. White parts are high, black parts are low. And there are a lot of free height maps online. I would definitely recommend just doing a quick search for height map. And just by going to images, you can see just how many are readily available here. Now the format of your heart map needs to be .raw. You can use a photo editing software like Photoshop or GIMP to export as raw in case you find a JPEG or PNG or any other format. In Photoshop it's as easy as going file, save as and selecting Photoshop raw. In fact I've gone ahead and prepared a heart map .raw right here. Let's simply drag this into Unity to import it. We then go to the terrain toolbox. Let's create a new terrain, but let's do so by importing a height map. So I'm going to check this checkbox right here. I'm going to select a height map file. By simply clicking this, I'm going to browse to the height map. And as you can see, we can change the height resolution. This doesn't have to be the same as the height map. You can make it a greater resolution if you want. I'm just going to keep it at 512. We can then remap our height map in any way that we'd like. I'm just going to make it less tall here. So I'm going to decrease the max. We also need to make sure that we aren't creating this in the same grouping ID as our previous terrain. So I'm going to set this to one. And let's now try and hit create. And as you can see, it's going to spawn this right on top. But we've now created a terrain based on that height map. And I think it looks really, really cool. And heart maps are just really great to use. They are really easy to get inspired by and just gives you a really solid base to work off of. Finally, once you've created the terrain that you'd like, simply go back into lighting and re-enable auto-generate and it's then going to generate a light map for your terrain. Awesome! That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, if you want to learn more about terrain, we will of course have a link for that in the description. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in May, and a special thanks to Tucson Konovsky, Daniel Dosanik, Naoki Iwasaki, Shane Cleveland, Chris Sullivan, Konstantinos Kerenzas, Infinity PBR, Faisal Marify, Leo Lissette, Ronin, Gregory Pierce, Tim of Holderbach, Kiros Videsky, and Erasmus. You guys rock!